Good morning and Christian greetings to all of you that are here. Obviously, don't greet those that aren't here. Although, uh, I think maybe there is a live stream this morning, so maybe that is capable or capable of doing that. I have um, a couple thoughts I'd like to share from Matthew chapter 25. And while you're turning there, I'm going to open it up for announcements. Would there be any announcement? school from home tomorrow. Brother Jonas is in Greenville, Tennessee this morning uh, for a send-off service for Raymond Fisher, and he would be on for the message for next Sunday. Let's remember them in their travels and as well as the, the rest of the Yoder family as they're traveling for the burial. I guess that would still be happening. Are there any other announcements? This Wednesday evening is our prayer meeting uh, week, so uh, let's plan for that Bible study. Let's remember Brother Phil as he travels to Haiti again and works on starting up the biblical discipleship courses again. Will you be teaching that yourself or are you just getting it going? Well, I, I hope you all enjoyed the Sunday school lesson. I, I did. I think we could have used uh, more time as I was uh, studying this morning. I turned to um, another resource, uh, Finney Cravello's book, and I, was, I found it interesting some of the the um, thoughts that he had concerning what happened here in, uh, in Acts. Um, one of the thoughts that, that I gleaned was that um, the account here in Matthew 25, we have the account of, of judgment. And then there's this, uh, the reason why there's, there was some that were were um, oh, let's see what was just the four of what verse am I looking for? There were some that had the blessing of the Lord, and there's something that were cursed. There's some uh, some that were cursed, and the difference was uh, how they treated um, the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, those in prison. The verse that I want to bring out is verse forty. It says, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. I have a question for you here in verse 40. There is a two words says, it says, My brethren. Who are the my brethren here in this in this passage? Who do we generally think this is talking about? And we read this passage. The church. The church, okay. Is that who we generally think? I, I guess I, that, that wasn't necessarily my general thinking. I, I would have generally felt like it was just the needs of the world around us in general. But the word, uh, my brother in there is actually, I think the, the Greek word is um, Adelphus. And it means 
It means uh, womb brother. And it, it gives the idea there of this is actually the family of God. And so he is saying, this is important. And um, it's actually the, the passage that we had in our Sunday school lesson may actually be a fulfillment of this, of this command, of this um, and I, I find that interesting and, and a blessing as we look at that. Um, one of the other thoughts that, that I gleaned was the difference between sharing and giving. Um, the idea of a family, again, the church being a family. In a family, we share many things. Uh, we, we have... Um, we don't have individual sofas at our house. We have one that the family shares. We have one dining table. We have, um, yeah, we have uh, some things that are personal, but many things we share. And in the family of God, we also have a sharing. And outside of the family, we may give, and we don't necessarily have that relationship, but in a, in a family, we share. So I, I, those are some thoughts that, that stood out to me. Then he also s shared a story, and I'm going to close with this. Um, in 2003 in New Jersey, one night there was a young man by the name of Bruce was found digging through a garbage can. And uh, him and his brothers, four of his brothers, or three of his brothers, there was four of them, were eating insulation and wall board to survive. And after some investigation in that home, they found out that there were seven children, and three were well-fed and nourished, and, but four of them were, were uh, terribly malnutrition. Um, Bruce was 19, at 19 was, weighed 45 pounds. Keith at 14 weighed 40 pounds. Tyrone at 10 weighed 28 pounds. Michael at nine weighed 23 pounds. Combined weight was 136 pounds. I don't know how that can be true even. I mean, it seems almost un unbelievable. But uh, Finney said that that in some ways illustrates the church today. There's some that are so well fed and then there's others in other places of the world that are in, in dire need. So I'd like to just uh, um, encourage us that we would remember who owns what we have and that we would be more than willing to, to share what God has given us with those that are in need. And as I thought of this, I, I realized I think our, we should have a, our prayer should be that we would know how and where to share because uh, as I think, of, I think of that, I find it difficult to know where to go with that. And uh, I think we should, uh, it's something we can encourage each other with and, and share um, when there are needs that we can fill them in a good way. And as was shared in our Sunday school lesson, sometimes just, just giving money and handouts isn't the answer. Uh, if I remember correctly, the, the statistics from Africa say that since they've gotten a lot of help from other countries, they are poorer than they were before. And so it's more than just handouts. And what that actually means, I think uh, we may need to look into more deeply. Anyhow, um, God bless you as, you as you open your heart. And as we uh, not only give, but as we share with each other and with the, with the family of God in, on a larger scale. We are blessed to have with us again a, a visiting minister, Steve Yoder from Heritage. Um, I would see, have you, have you been down there in the men's meetings? I think you were to one, maybe? Mm -hmm. One. But we do see him maybe more often than some of you do. He has been involved in our, our, some of our meetings. I think he was here about a year ago after uh, Devin's death. I think he preached a message for us here. So we're glad to have him back again. And uh, I'd like to, to pray together, and uh, then we'll turn the time over to him. Let's stand for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning for the opportunity that we have to be gathered again. We pray, Lord, for the many that aren't here, can't be here because of sickness or whatever it might be. 
I pray, Lord, that you might um, fill Brother Steve this morning with your word. And may you just use him to share with us uh, the needs that we have here. And we ask, Lord, that you might have our, help us to have open hearts, receptive to what you have for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. So when are the sale days? We're going to disperse of our properties and help the poor. You know, it's a blessing to think that Jesus said, the poor you will always have with you. And I think he, he shared that to make us realize that no matter what we do, there will always be opportunities for us to help and to share. So may we, may this open our hearts that we're willing servants to help people find uh, means to survive. And we spent some time in Haiti and, and uh, one of the local brethren there said that you can preach till you're blue in the face to a starving man. You need to show him your love, that you care for him. So may we be there to help those people. I want to greet each one in Christ's name this morning. It's a blessing to be here again this morning. Uh, I, I thought there was a bigger church down here, but I guess there's just quite a few not here. So Lord bless you for those that are here anyway. <clears throat> for a message this morning, this morning, turn with me to Psalm 107. I'm going to read this chapter. There's four, four different things in here that we want to look at. In this chapter of Psalm 107, the title of the message is, What is Thy Cry? What is Thy Cry? You know, we read, in the, we read here in this chapter four different times when they cried out. And the people cried out. We read quite a bit in the, in the Bible of people crying out. And uh, I looked in the Strong's Concordance, and there's over 300 different times when the word cry or cried or similar is used, but it's always, and there's a lot of different definitions, but they all are linked together there's to, two, to two different ones. One of them was like when the, when the, uh, the demon possessed cried out, and uh, that was, it was like, a, it's like a shriek, or when the, uh, when, when God came to uh, Cain and he said, the blood of thy brother crieth, the, blo the voice of thy brother's blo blood crieth unto me from the ground. It's a, it's a shriek that comes to God like a judgment uh, for justice. And, and there's different times when we heard that, that voices cried out or people cried out. For, and, and this comes to God, it's a shriek. And the other one is the Ilo call where it says, and they were all related to one of these two, is a cry for attention. We, we are crying out for someone's attention, and we cry out to God for his attention. Makes me think of quite some time ago, there was, a, when I was, I think I was still at home, there was a neighbor man that went out behind his house, out behind his barn, and they had this big old sliding door, and he would reach in somehow to unhook this door to open it. But as he reached in there, something happened that, he couldn't get the hook unhooked, and he couldn't get his arm out anymore. There he was stuck, simply with his arm behind the door, and couldn't get out, and he was on the far side of the barn, and he tried to call for help. He wanted someone's attention. And his wife was in the house, but she didn't hear him. And you know, as we sometimes do, we become more desperate. And finally, he started crying for help to get someone's attention because he knew where he was, and he knew where help was, so he needed to cry for someone's attention. And his cry was so adamant that neighbors from over a mile away heard him and came to his rescue. So what is thy cry today? How desperate are we for help? Do we need our help? Do we, do we realize at times that we need someone's help? And most of all, we need the grace of God. We need God's help. So let's read Psalm 107 here. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, when he hath redeemed from the, 
whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and the north and the south and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in solitary in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in, sha in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron because of their rebellion against the words of God and con contempt the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. He brought them out of darkness and of shadow and of death, and break their bands asunder in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. And he sent, and he sent his word and healed them, and he delivered them from their destruction. O oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships, they do business in great waters. These see the works of the Lord and in wanders in the deep and his wanders in the deep. For he commandeth and raises the stormy wind which lifteth up the wave thereof. Then... They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depth. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are in their wit's end, at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distress. He maketh the storms, he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. They then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. O oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into wilderness and waters into dry ground, a faithful land into barrenness and for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into the standing water, and dry ground into wa water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation, and sow the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruit of increase. He blesses them also, so that they are multiplied, multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to, disease, to decrease. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet said is he the poor on high from affliction and maketh his families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice and all iniquity shall stop their mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. There's four different things that we see in this chapter that people, either they by default arrive there or by choice they arrive there. And it says they come to a place where they see their need and they cry out to the Lord. And the first one is, is the wandering soul. The wandering soul, and we, we can easily think of the children of Israel. They became a wandering soul. They were wandering in the wilderness and God delivered them mightily, and they came to, they, they were able to receive a lot of blessings. But because of their unfaithfulness, they again found themselves wandering in deserts and in places. 
And it says, and then they cried out. But first of all, let's go to Exodus, Exodus 2, where it says, and it came to time in the process of time. I'm going to turn that. I didn't write that down. Exodus 2. The last two verses is what I want to read. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage and they cried and their cry came unto God by reason of bondage. And God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. We see here the first, the first cry that came unto God was the children of Israel's cry because of their taskmasters. It says, and it came to pass in process of time. Do we not all find ourselves? Process of time is happening all the time. We're always experiencing the process of time and things are changing. You know, we're, we're experiencing different things. We're, we're experiencing things happen, things change. We change, leaders change, churches change. Uh, there's so many things that, that happen. And if we personally, if we personally don't know where we stand, if we personally haven't established ourselves as the children of Israel were there, and as the process of time, all of a sudden there's a lot of things happen and the things changed, and they weren't sure what to do. But there's one thing they did. They cried out to God. And what is thy cry today? What are we crying? Where do we find ourselves as the wandering soul? We think of <clears throat> Luke 15, the prodigal son. You know, it was by choice. It was by chance or by default that the children of Israel came and they were wandering souls. They were out wandering and they cried out. But the prodigal son is probably where too many people today find themselves a wandering soul and coming to the place where they need to cry out to God and find themselves that the taskmaster is control of them. Either the taskmaster is controlling them or we find ourselves simply serving the taskmaster. As the, the prodigal son, he was satisfied with not having an agenda, not having a goal, not having a vision, but simply all he had in mind is to go out and live a riotous life. And he found himself without deciding, without planning, without pursuing, all of a sudden he finds himself in desperation. And so many people find themselves there because they don't take time to think where they're going, what they're doing, what the choices they're pursuing brings them in and they become a wandering soul. <clears throat> Just last night I came across, as I was studying, this again, I, I came across a verse that really challenged me. And it was in the account of Jonah. You know, Jonah wasn't only a, a wandering man. He was a running man. He had his running shoes on. He was going. And he finds himself in the ship that was tossed, and we'll get to the storms later. But he finds himself there in the ship, and he still didn't cry out to God. But when the, when the shipman there asked him, he said, who are you and what's your nationality and who are you? Remember, a man running from God in full disobedience, he was willing to acknowledge, I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord God of heaven, which hath made the dry sea and the land. How many times do we see people? How many times are we guilty of no, we might not be running from Nineveh. But wasn't running from Nineveh simply disobedience to God? Wasn't running from Nineveh simply just not, as we heard in devotions, showing God that we love him by doing his will? And how many times do we see people, they acknowledge they're Christians, they profess they're Christians, but they have their running shoes on. They're running from God, they're doing things that simply does not produce fruit. And the beautiful thing about this account here is we see that when they cried out to God, um, Psalm 107 again, when they cried out to God, he brought them 
into his city of habitation. If I can find Psalm here in the middle here, somewhere. And isn't that the way the God that we serve does? He has told us if we knock, it will be open to us. If we ask, we will receive. Uh, there's another one there that I'm missing. But our, the God that we serve is one that when we cry out to God, he will not always give us what we ask for. You know the song that the, is it the Stutzman family that sings, we, the song, the gimme, 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 we always, you know, we, sometimes we're caught up in, in praying too much for ourselves. Lord, bless us. Lord, help us. Lord, protect us. Lord, but how often are we in intercession prayer for other people? How often are we really concerned? How often do we, how much do we really love our brethren? That we're crying out. But here it says that, and they cried out. Then verse 6, then they cried unto the Lord, and he delivered them out of their stress. First he delivered them out of their stress. And then he's, in verse 7 it says, and he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. You know, if we cry out to God, he will answer our prayers. It might not be exactly the way we desire or the way we want, but he brought them into a city of habitation. He answered their prayers when they cried out. The next one we see is, is people that were in bondage. They were in, they were in prison. They were in, uh, it says... Uh, They were in bonds of iron, being bound in affliction and in iron. You know, men go through life choosing their path and accepting their destination and living a life in prison, hoping for something better, and they're never willing to cry out. You know, we think of the, the man at the Gadarenes you know, when we think of that account, all we know is that Jesus came and there he was. And no one was able to tie him down. He was able to break chains and ropes. But as I, as I thought of this and meditated over this, I had to think, I had to ask the question, what were the steps? What were the steps that led him to live that way? He probably wasn't able to break the chains to begin with. But that's how Satan works. He he works in small steps. And if we're willing to submit, if we're willing to follow, if we're willing to look, if we're willing to listen, then he will give stronger holds and stronger holds. And here the man was in prison, spiritual prison. <clears throat> and he, when Jesus came, he cried out, Art thou come to torment me before the time? You know, I know just recently I heard of a man that was approached or was exposed of his life in pornography. And he said, I was desperate to get out, but I couldn't. I was bound. I was like a wet, wet rag. I couldn't do anything. I was bound. And he said, he is, he's, so, he's so thankful to be delivered from this. You know, it's, it's great. It's, it's so powerful when someone breaks down and confesses. That's what God wants from us. That's where Satan gets us if we follow his, his footsteps, if we follow his temptations, if we follow his yield to his, to his uh, temptations. And this man, as much as acknowledged, and he was a professing Christian, he was a, he was a plain man, and he said, I knew, I knew I was going to take this sin to the grave with me. He was so bound but Jesus can deliver. May we, before we get to that place, before we even start that path as this man of the Gadarenes, may we cry out to God for deliverance. May we cry out to God knowing that we need strength, we need help to overcome the sin of bondage, the sin of being in prison, the sin of being overpowered by Satan. And then it says that they, he break their bonds asunder and he freed them he saved them out of their distress. He delivered them. And you know, the beautiful thing about the man there at the gatherings was 
at the and at the, the graves, the tombs there was, you know, simply being delivered from the powers of darkness changed so many things that he didn't even ask for. It says he sat there, clothed. We don't read anything that Jesus said, now you go get clothes right away. That's that was something he desired to be. And we see and and then he says he sat there in his right mind. And we see the same thing come forth from, uh, from Zacchaeus. All Jesus said was, I want to come to your house today. And the convictions just started rolling in. And he was willing to say, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, pay back fourfold, I believe it was. But it shows here if we cry out to God, he will deliver us from the bondage of sin and he will free us. The next thing we see here is is sickness. They're troubled in afflictions and in sickness. And I think it's talking about physical sickness. It's talking about spiritual sickness. And it can be mental sickness, emotional sickness, and moral sickness. We can be bound with those and I think those are all these are all entwined in each other. We're wandering, we're spiritually sick, we're, sick, we're morally sick. We're in, this, in the storms of life, we're, we're spiritually sick, or we're bound by arms, we're spiritually and morally or emotionally or, or mentally sick. But God can deliver us all. <clears throat> you know, I think I've been, I've been involved somewhat with people that have had serious mental struggles and I'm very careful to say this just as my heart can cause deficiencies and as my brain can all of a sudden or my heart or my limbs or my whatever organs in my body can all of a sudden be affected that they don't function anymore <clears throat> excuse me I believe our brain can be dysfunctional as well. I, I sincerely believe that. But we see, why do we see so many times when people become mentally dysfunctioned? That there's things, there's people, there's hurts. Are there things that have not been worked through that lead us? And I say this very carefully. Are there things that we have not dealt with, that have not been worked through, that brings us and leads us to this place or we become dysfunctional. But Jesus, but here it says that when they cried out, they experienced deliverance. And I think probably one of the greatest things is the thing that we bring these things on ourselves. In 1 Corinthians 11, I'm going to read here, I wrote them down here. Whos, wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For if he eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are sickly among you, and many sleep. I believe that's a very dangerous thing, is to be struggling with feelings, with bitterness toward other people. The Bible tells us that if there's a root of bitterness, someday it will... It will, it will show its ugly head, and, and it says many others will be defiled by it. But sickness and jealousy and bitterness and anger, all those things are a small thing that we think, well, I, I'm okay. I, I'll deal with it. You know, I once talked with a brother that was, was working through something, something and, and he wasn't sure where he, where he wants to go with this, and he said, well, I think it'll be okay. It'll, it'll all come out. And I said, no. Sin, bitterness, jealousy, they don't come out in the wash. We have to take care of them. We have to deal with them. We have to confess them or repent of them. We go to communion and, you know, we, we hope we don't have to wash feet with this brother. Or we try to position ourselves and maybe that doesn't happen here. And I trust it doesn't. But those small feelings that we carry, or maybe we're, maybe we're uh, guilty of some sin, of our thought life, of uh, things that we desire after, or just, just some hidden thing that we have in a closet somewhere 
that we don't want to expose and we go through life and we go through communion and it says, for this cause, many are sickly among you and many sleep. Can we cry out to God and work through these things and deal with these things and be delivered? Because it says here, and they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distress and he sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed them. They were healed because they cried out. We can experience healing in all our sickness, in all our struggles. <clears throat> the fourth one we see here is the storms of life. Anyone here that hasn't faced a storm of life, haven't sat through a thunderstorm or thunderstorm or lightning and kind of chirped at this and chirped at that and but you know it says here that they're they uh, they they go down to the ship the sea and ships and do business in great waters you know are we careful the businesses that we're involved in are we careful the things that we involve ourselves in but it says here their works he commands the storms to raise and lift us the waves and then the mountain. You know, with every, you know, we go through life and we have these struggles in our lives that we're dealing with and we try to overcome them. We say that's our weakness and we try to overcome them. But you know, with every rise of wave in a storm, there's always a trough waiting for it to dump us in. My dad experienced it in, in uh, Lake Erie years ago. They were up fishing and all of a sudden a, a quick storm came up and uh, it talks here about them, them staggering as drunken men. The, the skipper there, the first wave that hit them, the skipper went flying over the, over the floor of the boat. He jumped up and he grabbed the, the stern again and tried to manage it. But he said it was so rough a storm. He said they would go up like they'd be completely out of water and they'd go down and they'd look like they were completely underwater. You know, there's so, so rough storms that we face at times. But you know, there was a big cargo ship that they worked themselves behind and it broke the waves. And you know, there's a, there's a savior in, in our storms that we can hide behind and we can overcome. We can be victors if, we, if we're faithful to find that and to commit ourselves to that. <clears throat> you know, what are some of the stormy seas that we experience? You know, there's some things that we experience in life that we simply have nothing to do with. We just simply can't control it. They're, they're laid at our feet. And we experience these things in life. And they're, we consider them storms of life. They're difficult to work through. and We have to work through these. But there's some storms that we experience in life that we simply experience. <clears throat> you know, when the disciples were out on the sea, they had a good experience with Jesus the night before. And they were out on the sea, just crossing the sea. And they found themselves in a storm, and Jesus came walking and calmed the storm. You know, sometimes I believe we experience a storm in life so God can show his power and his strength and his goodness on how we respond to that. But then we take the account of Jonah that faced the storm. He found himself in that storm because of choices he made in life. So when I ask myself the question, the storms in life that I face and experience, are they by choice? Or are they, or are they, is, is God bringing something to strengthen me? <clears throat> you know, as we go through life, we experience these ups and downs. We experience these ups and downs, and unless we come to the place where we cry out to God and he and he's, he calms the storms, and he brings this sea to a plain, uh, there will be catastrophic uh, situations. And it, it will be sooner or later, and you know, sometimes, unfortunately, it will be too late. <clears throat> what, are some of the, what are some of the things that we face in life that cause us to be wandering or cause us to be in prison or cause us to be sickly among you, or that we're facing storms of life. You know, there's things like, like jealousy, 
There's things like bitterness. There's things like self-righteousness. You know, we don't, we don't think that as a sin, but Jesus said, unless ye, how did he say about the scribes and Pharisees, unless your righteousness is great, exceeds the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees, I'm blank right now. You shall have, you shall, thank you. So, self-righteousness is sin. We try to, we try to say we're good. We try to say we're children of God. We try to say we're Christians. We try to produce fruit, but we're living a storm underneath. We're, we're living a storm in disguise, or we're living as wandering people, and we're willing to, to just go on through life. Bitterness. You know, we're not involved in bitterness. We don't. I would expect every one of us have had something happen to us that we kind of felt a little revengeful. We just felt like if something happens to this brother or this sister, we would, we would just be okay with it. Is there bitterness that we're struggling with? <clears throat> Family feuds or marriage problems or church struggles. You know, if those things aren't, if God has not calmed the storms of our life, if God has not brought us from a wandering, straying uh, prodigal son, if God has not broken the bonds of us in our, in our prison or healed us, we're going to face those storms in life sooner or later. Anger to our children, to our wives. Do they fear, do they dread when something, when there's a mishap? When they break something or when something happens, is, is, that, our, is that our tendency in our life? <clears throat> you know, Jesus, Jesus cried out a few times, too, in desperation that he wanted someone's attention. When he was in the garden, he was praying earnestly for us and for his situation that he was facing. And it says he cried out to God and he said, if it be possible to pass this, <clears throat> excuse me, that this cup pass from me. But you know, our Jesus was so loving and so caring for us. He wanted to help us as wanderers. He wanted to deliver us from prison. He wanted to heal our broken hearts and our broken lives and our struggling lives. And he wanted to calm our storms in life that he simply said to the Father, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. <clears throat> and then his last words that he, that he cried out to the Father before he died was, it is finished. It is finished. Deliverance, salvation is complete. Salvation is finished. So what does that mean to us today? Salvation is finished. Salvation is complete. There's a way for us to be delivered from wandering, from being in prison, from being in the storms of life, from experiencing those things just continually, and from being healed. In 1 John 1, 9, it's a very simple verse where I think we probably all know it by heart. If we confess our sins, that's crying out to God, that I need help, that I have failed, that I've been a wanderer, that I'm in prison. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That last part is what I like so well. He, he, he forgives us. You know, we can always have forgiveness. But isn't it, wouldn't it be nicer if we could live without those scars, without those remembrances? He says, and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He gives us a life that we don't have to go there wandering and in prison anymore. And in James 5, 16, it says, as a body, not, not, not toward not confessing our sins to God, but as a body, as believers, as working together, he says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed, that you may be blessed, that you have a working relationship, that you're one. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth not much. Was it not this cry 
an effectual, fervent prayer that they cried out. And God delivered them in, in all of these areas, in all areas of our life, if we are willing to confess one to another, to pray one for another, and to love each other, God will always have an answer for us. God will always bring us to a city of refuge. God will always break the bonds that are within us, um, among us, and will always heal our broken hearts, our evil thoughts. That was another thing that I was going to touch, and I kind of skipped over it, but you know, that's probably something that there's a lot of sins that are open. People can see the way we live. People can see if we're disobedient and if we're unfaithful. People can see if we have a problem with this or with that or we divorce or whatever it may be. There's a lot of things that are in the open. But, you know, I, I see every one of you there. Just, you're just sitting there and looking at me. But I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what you're thinking. Your mind can be full of corruption. <clears throat> but our thought life, do we cry out to God, Lord, deliver me from these evil thoughts. You know, we can't help it when the birds fly over our nest, over our head. But we're sure put forth effort when they try to build a nest on our head. We don't want that to happen. What about our thoughts? When Satan brings a temptation, do we meditate on it? Do we cultivate it? Do we think about it? Or do we ask God, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Deliver me from this. <clears throat> May we confess all our shortcomings, all our faults, all our weaknesses, and all our struggles and cry out to God as we are experiencing continually in the process of time. Things are changing all the time. But are we faithful? Are we steadfast? Are we solid that we know that when things happen, that we can cry out to God and he will deliver us? Shall we kneel for prayer? <clears throat> Father in heaven, we come to you this close of this service. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for your word and for your spirit that dwells within us and that speaks to us. Lord, we just pray that as we think of the things that we face in life, help us to cry out to you for deliverance, for strength, for healing, for calming our storm. And Lord, may we confess our sins, knowing that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And Lord, may we confess our faults one to another and pray for each other Lord, that you might be glorified and we can experience your blessings in life. We just pray that you would be with the church here at McConnellsville. Bless them and strengthen them. Help them to be builders and to be laborers for your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Thank you, Brother Steve, for sharing that message. What is our cry this morning? I was thought of uh, the, the song in our hymnary. Um, says, the great physician now is here, the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping heart to cheer. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. His name dispels my guilt and fear, no other name but Jesus. Oh, how my soul delights to hear the charming name of Jesus. And when to that bright world above we rise to see our Jesus, we'll sing around the throne of love, his name, the name of Jesus. So regardless what our cry is, we have the great position we can go to. What are uh, your thoughts this morning you'd like to share? Is there anyone that would like to share a word of testimony or...
Anyone else? I like, I like that. that. One of the closing verses here, well, a couple of me shared just the, the fact of we have that avenue. We can confess our sin or our need or whatever it may be. And he is faithful and just. God is faithful and just. All right, is there anyone else? If not, we'll have a closing song. is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs>